Welcome to the literal walkthrough of the Zinzenko New Media Center. My name is Craig Underwood. I will be your tour guide today. So we're just walking through here. We're going to show you just how to get up and running to do a very basic video recording using the studio equipment. So we're going to walk through here. Notice the hidden light switch here. So we can turn that on and raise the faders up. So those control these lights here, uh, the fluorescence and the ceiling above the studio area. So even though we have these uh, studio lights, it's always good to have even more light. So we can keep those fluorescents on. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here. Now the system here is already turned on, which it may be when you come in. But the power for the camera is this little knob right here. So I'm just going to switch that to off just to show you an example. And... So the way we work this is we turn this on. Just kind of push in that little thing, rotate it to on. Okay. And this box up here, well this display actually, is just a video preview monitor. So that way you have something a little bit bigger than the smaller monitor down there. So this one, power button is on the right hand side. Just press and hold. Oh, press and hold. I'm actually not pressing it, so. There we go, you'll hear a little click. Press and hold, and it will be turned on. Now, you'll notice that uh, the audio meters are going here whenever I'm talking, but the audio meters on this display aren't the ones you want to look at. So we'll show you what to do when you're actually recording audio. So anyway, just a little close-up of that power button up there. Okay, so the signal comes out of the camera, loops around here into this preview video display here and then back out through some cables on the floor over here over to the rest of the system. So it looks like we have to turn on a few things. Uh, this Mackie audio mixer should always be on. A little phantom power button should always be on as well. And we're going to go over here. The raw switcher obviously is turned off. There's a little power switch in the back here, right back here. So we'll make sure that thing's turned on. Okay. Now it takes several minutes for it to boot up and it's got a really loud fan, as you can probably hear. So while that's turning on, we will turn on a few other things as well. We're gonna turn on this monitor with the power button down here. A touch sensitive thing. So we'll turn that one on. And this monitor on the wall has a little power button on the very bottom. Just push that in and it too will power on. And this guy down here, this little video monitor, is actually the video recorder. You'll notice it's the same kind of video monitor that's up on top of the camera, um, but this is the one we're actually going to be using to record. So again, the power button is over here on the right side. Press that in and hold it for a second or two, and you can see things light up. And you see this guy is still booting up, so please wait. Great. So while that's booting up, in the sequence of powering on, don't forget about this little device here, which is our audio delay, which goes between the audio mixer and our final master recorder. So make sure that is powered on. Okay, once everything is turned on, so you've turned on the camera, you've turned on the monitor, you've turned on the Ross video switcher and the recorder, and you've adjusted the lights and now that this Ross video switcher is fully booted up we'll just get to a very basic starting point by pressing one on each of the three rows here so for the key aux custom program and preset rows we're just going to make it all number one and over here on this preview monitor here, you can see the preview and the program uh, preview is kind of like a cue and program is what you're actually going to record which is what's going to the recorder. In this case, we're just looking at the green screen. But if we zoom out on the camera, uh, we'll see this monitor up top on the wall will show exactly what we are recording. Along with down here under the program view and on here on our master recorder. Now, in order to record, we have to make sure we have an SD card into the side. And there's two memory slots. In this case, this one uh, actually came with a 
This one actually came with a little SD card, so we're going to put that back in, like so. Now you could just record as is, so once it uh, detects the memory card, it'll give you the, gr the uh, red record light to hit record. However, you'll notice there's no audio metering going, so we do have to adjust the audio mixer. And the way we're going to start with audio is just deciding what microphones we're going to use. We have two choices. We have uh, lapel microphones, which we can clip onto someone's uh, lapel or shirt or whatever, uh, and they can talk into that. And it's wired, so they just kind of go wherever they need to go. Or if you have, say, a group of people in front of the camera, you could use the shotgun microphone here that's mounted to the camera itself. The shotgun mic actually does only go to the audio mixer here. It does not go straight into the camera. So uh, we pretty much never want to just use the recording function of the camera itself. We have to record through the system in order to get both audio and video from the microphones. So let's start with this microphone here, the uh, shotgun microphone. So this is wired back over to here and it's on input number three. And so the way we're going to start with this is we're going to set the level up to unity gain and set the main mix out to unity gain as well. Uh, we're also going to make sure that the phantom power is on and that the main mix button under control room source here is pressed and that these two are not pressed. And this one is not pressed as well. So once we have those set, then we want to go up to this mic gain knob and just turn this up to usually about uh, 4 o'clock or so, anywhere between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock on the dial there. Um, that should get you uh, an appropriate amount of volume. And basically you'll, you'll check by seeing how loud the signal is. You want the signal to be up in this zero range. Uh, now the meters aren't going too much because I'm not directly in front of the microphone. Uh, but hopefully with the people on camera, in front of the camera, in front of the microphone, you'll get levels up into zero, maybe up into plus three or plus six up into this area here. And that'll be a nice strong signal for reporting. So that's, um, that's kind of where you want to be. Now if we go over here, we're going to verify our levels. So over here on the master recorder, we can see that there are audio levels going here. You notice on there, they look kind of low, so uh, that's why back over here we want to make sure we're up in the upper range of these meters so we have a nice strong audio signal. And then to record, just to get a recording, we load an SD card into the side and in here uh, there was one that came with the system so we just put it in here with the uh, contact side up, push that in till it clicks and you know you'll be ready to record when the red record light lights up. And it's a touch screen, so you can simply tap the record button. And once you see the numbers going up here, you know that you are recording. And again, if you don't see audio signal level down here, you will not have any audio on your recording. You can just tap the red button again to stop. The numbers stop going, and you are not recording. And that's how you do a very, very basic recording on this system. We are going to look at the lighting console. Okay, in our brief uh, intermission there, found out that this blackout button was pressed. And see how the little light kind of blinks and flashes up there under blackout? Make sure that blackout is not turned on, because otherwise nothing will work. So here, each light fader, each light has two faders, uh, one for brightness or dimming, depending on your, the way you like to look at it, and the second one for focus. So I'm going to adjust the first fader, and you can see the effect of it up here. So the light, let's see, going brighter and going dimmer, brighter, dimmer, great. Now with it all the way bright, now I'm going to use fader number two, which controls the focus. So it's focusing very sharp, and then it's going wide. So narrow and wide. And uh, so the widest is down at the bottom. Most narrow is all the way up the top. So generally speaking, we're going to have fully brightness, but and uh, wide. 
in terms of its focus. So again, for each light takes up two faders. So light number one, going clockwise, starting with the very far front right, number one, number two, this is light number three, four, five, and six. So light number one is one and two, light number two is three and four, light number three is five and six, light number four is seven and eight. Now I'm going to switch to bank B bank B over here. Now I'm able to control lights 5 and 6. So now we have lots of brightness all over the place. And that's generally speaking how you're going to use the lighting console. So you just change between bank, bank A or B, and adjust brightness and focus for each light. And now for our 30 second review of how to turn things on and get a recording through this system. Okay, first turn on the camera here, turn on the video monitor up here, and then we go back over to here, make sure the Ross video switcher is turned on with the switch in the back. We're going to make sure that the master recorder is turned on again with the switch on the side or the push button power button on the side. We're going to make sure that this device is turned on and that our Mackie is turned on. We're going to get our setter audio levels making sure that the mic gain is turned up, setting the levels to unity gain, and adjusting a little bit as necessary, turn on phantom power, make sure the main mix button is turned is pushed down, and these are up. Then we go over to our main master switcher, press one on each row here, verify that we're seeing what we want on the program output, because that's what's actually getting recorded. You can verify it on the uh, TV on the wall, and also, Verify what we're seeing here on the master recorder. Uh, load our SD card into the side, verify that we have audio signals, and press the record button to go. Now that was about a uh, 75 second review, but I think you get the main idea. Here's how to properly shut down the system in the Reeves New Media Center. First thing we'll do is turn off the camera, switch here, go over here, press and hold, Powers that off. We'll go over here. The Mackie and the delay may stay on, but if they are off, you, know, you could turn also turn this guy off here, which is fine. The carbonite, the Ross carbonite here is the rocker switch in the back where my hand is here. We can turn that off. Uh, up here on the display underneath, if you push in, you'll see that and then you pull the knob forward towards you for monitor off. So that's how we turn that guy off. The lights up here, simply turn all the faders down to zero and then do the same thing, switch to bank B and turn everything off and you will see the lights turn off there. And we can't forget about our master recorder here and the power button on the side. We'll press and hold that until it goes away. Great. And then we go over to the wall switch over here. Don't forget about this guy. Turn it off. And that's pretty much all you need to do. You don't have to worry about actually turning off the control panel here for this. That can always stay on. And the audio mixer here can also stay on all the time too, since it doesn't really have a power on off switch. It's low power consumption and it's not going to hurt anything. So. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it.